What's your name? Michael Savage. And how long have you been a member of the Disability and Human Rights Group, Michael? Probably four or five years. Four or five years, right on. And what's your favorite thing about being a member of the Disability and Human Rights Group? Just the fact that we talk about issues that affect people with some form of disability. Um, never ever really thought of myself as in a disabled state, but they figure because I got a walker, I am. The, the transit gave me a pass, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been an epileptic all my life, but I never considered it a disability, mm -hmm. so. Do you find you face some of the similar issues? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. Well, when I was in grade one, um, the teacher and the principal of the, grade, the public school sent home a note to my mother that they should put me in an institution. I'd never had a seizure in public. Mm -hmm. Never had one at school. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the kind of attitude I was facing. And I have faced it occasionally, which is from working with the other members, some of them who have disabilities, uh, serious disabilities, I've learned that their issues are my issues, even though I don't consider myself disabled. Mm -hmm. okay. um, they talk a lot in the group about lived experience. Yes. Um, how do you think that plays a role in advocacy? I think it plays a strong role because when you're asked something, if you have lived experience, you don't have to dig for an answer. Um, but lived experience comes in a number of ways. The first way it comes, lived experience, of course, but also with integrating with other people's experiences, which I've done significantly, for instance, with homeless people. I may not have actual lived experience being homeless, but I sure as heck know a lot from what they've shared with me. Mm -hmm. Similarly with disabi dis dis disabilities. And why is it that you think that lived experience often doesn't play a role when people make decisions? Well, one of the main reasons I firmly believe is the fact that a lot of people with lived experience don't want to talk about it. They feel there's a stigma attached to it. Uh, issues with mental health issues or being homeless. Uh, there's still the, it's all their fault. Or, heaven forbid, it's God's fault. They did something wrong. Well, I know that one quite well because uh, I heard that about my epilepsy as a child. Well, it's punishment from God. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want nothing to do with this guy if he's going to punish little old me for something I got no control over. So, so I think that th I think it's important for there to be groups of people who are willing to speak because the one voice often gets lost in the noise, whereas a group, it's one voice, yes, but it's one voice where all the voices are heard. So I might be someone who sees this video and I might be someone living with a disability or might know someone with a disability. What would joining this group uh, do for me? Well, first off, education, big time. You, you would learn that disabled people aren't as disabled as you think, number one. Um, number two, I would think that big important part for a person to join this group, what they would get out of it is the feeling of people on the same page as you and who are working. So there is actually something happening. Like a lot of people say, well, I don't want to join that group. They don't do anything. Or they just sit around and have their coffees and shoot the breeze. Well, that's not what this group does. I know from myself writing letters, I've written letters that the group has published, but I've also written letters on my own. I found that the ones that the group has endorsed usually go a little bit further into somebody's head than just 
me squawking. Mind you, that ain't going to stop me. <laughs> right on. Um, how would you bring new members into the group and make them feel welcome? That's a tricky question. Um, well, first off, if I knew somebody who I thought would have the time and would be willing, I'd just go out and ask them. Believe me, I've done that with many, many groups and many, many things I've been involved in. I just go out and ask them. Uh, and they can tell me no. That's the worst answer I can get. Uh, the issue, though, is we are a group. So I don't want to just go out and ask just anybody because there are some people who I feel strongly have a voice and it needs to be heard. But they are part of the group that wants to be the voice. And they want to be heard over everybody else. And as I said, group is important. You know, I, I'm not trying to squash their dreams, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to say, listen, you got to listen to the rest of us if you want to come in. Mm -hmm. And there have been people who I've wanted to get into different groups who, after talking with them and understanding what they want to talk about, I know they don't fit because they just want to focus on themselves. And that defeats the whole purpose of a group. Mm -hmm. And because he, I suppose, right? Like yeah. Self-advocacy and then... Well, self-advocacy is important, but yeah. it's, it can be like the death of a group because if people feel, well, all you're saying is what Bob is saying, and yet you might have 10 other people but all they hear is Bob, and they hear something that th from Bob that they don't like, they'll brand the group with that. And once the group is branded with it, I will say it's dead. Mm -hmm. It has to be resurrected somehow. Mm -hmm. And right now, this group is at a stage where, yes, it needs to grow and involve more people. There's no argument there. But it also needs to have people who are willing to work. Okay. Awesome. It's not a free ride. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you were to pick one moment as a lasting memory of this group since you've been a member, what would that be? Well, I think of a couple. The first one I think of, of course, when I was talking about writing. When they first put the tracks in for the new system, by the way, I'm not opposed to it. But in the winter, when it snows, it all fills up with slush and the plows don't work as well. And what ends up happening when you cross the tracks, the wheels on my cart slip sideways and drop in the crack. That's like, now mind you, I've never done the butt over my head <laughs> into the ground, but it's quite scary that way. And uh, when I joined the group, I brought that forward, and I had a letter ready to go to the e editors. And the people in the group said, well, we should basically send that off to all the different levels of government and everything. So that was kind of neat. It was a case of one voice, the rest of the voices seeing the value in the one voice. And it wasn't like I force them to do any of this. They just thought it fit with what they were doing. So that was sort of like a mini quote unquote victory when I first got involved. The other thing was how I'm involved in a number of agencies and things, how we all have very similar mandates. We just go about it differently. And what's really neat about this one is it is a different way of doing a lot of the similar work that needs to be done in other social arenas, but it has a place, you know, like a, we talk about it being the Disability and Human Rights Group, but it's actually bigger than that, you know, because like I sit on the HUG, Housing and Homeless Umbrella Group. I'm in the All In 2020 Group. I'm also at my church, I'm Chair of Outreach, so I've got, you know, things like 
was, it was under the cold, now it's Friday at first, but all those different projects, all undergoing at the same time, they all have the same basic message. We all need to be together. We all need to work together to help one another, not to uh, charge over, or, but nobody is to be left behind or forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that's the big plus. And I feel that way when I'm in the group. That's awesome. Um, well, this winter has been especially bad. I oh didn't yeah. get out for a number of meetings. I had uh, cataract surgery for another one. And uh, I sent the last meeting, that's one of the times I had the cataract surgery, and I sent an email to Brad. I said, Brad, I still want to pull along. Just this winter has kept me inside, and this meeting I won't be here because I'll be in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, And it's that's where the plus is. Brad said, Sure, you can still stay. You know, it wasn't like, well, you've missed six meetings or something. You know, you're done. No, I missed six meetings because, well, four of them were completely out of my control. And one of them I overslept. But you still had a viable place in the group. Yeah, That's awesome. it's a definitely a viable place. The, the people are of similar mind, but they're enough different that you hear many viewpoints which is how you make a decision that will last and will work. Because if you only hear one voice, that's the only thing that you're going to hear, and it will turn you off quicker than heck. 